Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 3.9, Subtract Decimals. The essential question for this lesson is, how can place value help you subtract decimals? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 3.9, found on page 69, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number one. As you can see, question number one has already been completed for us, but it's a good model for how to estimate and then find the difference. For question one, I have six and five tenths, and from that I'm subtracting three and nine tenths. Well, our first job is to estimate. So I'm going to start out by focusing on my six and five tenths. And what I know is that six is in the ones place, and five is the number to the right of my six. So that five is a number that decides whether I need to round my six up or whether that six is going to stay the same. And what I know is five tells me that I need to round up. So I'm going to be adding one to my six, and when I do that, one plus six is going to take me to seven. So six and five tenths rounds to the whole number seven. Now let's focus on the second number given, which is three and nine tenths. Well, I know that the three is the number that I'm going to be rounding to because it's in the ones place, and I'm going to look at the number to the right of that three, which is a nine. Well, I know once again that a nine is greater than five, so nine tells me that I'm going to have to round that three up, which means I'm going to have to add one to my three. And when I do that, three plus one is going to take me to four. Now, my last step is to subtract. Well, I know that seven minus four is going to give me three, so we know that our estimated answer is 3. Now our next step is to find the difference. Now when I'm finding the difference between two decimal numbers, I need to make sure that my decimal points are aligned, which ensures that I'm subtracting the correct decimal values. Now let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to start out, and I notice first of all that yes, my decimal points are aligned, so I'm going to start out by working on the numbers that are in the tenths place. So I have a nine tenths being subtracted from five tenths. Well, I know that I can't take nine away from five, so what happens is we have to regroup. So that six is going to now become the five, and this five is now going to become a 15. And I now know that 15 minus the nine will leave me with the six in the tenths place. Now, I have in my problem left my numbers in the ones place. So I now have 5 minus 3, and I know that 5 minus 3 is going to be 2. And what I also know is my decimal should fall in between the tenths and the ones. So I end up with an answer of 2 and 6 tenths. And what I also notice is 2 and 6 tenths is close to my estimated answer of 3. So we know that we're on the right track. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Once again, our job is to estimate and then find the difference. So I'm going to start out by coming up first of all with my estimated answer. Now, what I have is four and 23 hundredths, and from that I'm subtracting two and 51 hundredths. So I want to know about what my answer should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus first on that four and 23 hundredths. Well, I know that I have that four in the ones place. It's the number I'm going to be rounding to. And so I'm going to look to the right of the 4, and to the right of the 4, I see that number 2. Well, I know that a 2 is less than 5, so that means my 4 is going to stay the same. So 4 and 23 hundredths is going to round to the whole number 4. Now, let's take a look at 2 and 51 hundredths. I know that my 2 is in the 1's place, so I'm going to look to the number that's to the right of my 2, and that would be the 5. Well, I know that a 5 tells me that I'm going to need to round up. So I'm going to be adding 1 to my 2. And when I add 1 plus 2, it's going to take me to the whole number 3. So 2 and 51 hundredths rounds to the whole number 3. Now my last step is to subtract. And I know that when I subtract 3 from 4, it's going to leave me with the whole number 1. So I know that my estimated answer is a 1. So what that means is 4 and 23 hundredths minus 2 and 51 hundredths, it should be about 1. Now, let's go ahead and find the difference of these two numbers. 
So what I need to make sure is this. First of all, I need to make sure that my place values are aligned. So I look to see are my decimal points lined up, ensuring that I'm subtracting the correct place values. And then I'm going to actually subtract and regroup as needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first in the hundredths. So I have three hundredths minus one hundredth, and I know that's going to leave me with two. So I'm going to have my two in the hundredths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. Well, I know that I can't take five tenths away from two tenths, so I'm going to have to regroup. So I'm going to regroup those four ones, and now it's going to become three ones, and my two tenths are now going to become twelve tenths. Well, I know that 12 minus 5 is going to leave me with 7, so I now have a 7 in the tenths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 3 minus 2 is going to leave me with 1. Now my last step is to place the decimal point. And I know that the decimal point always falls between the ones in the tenths place. So I'm going to place my decimal point right in between the 1 and the 7. And what I should also notice is my decimal points should be lined up in both the problem and also in the difference. So what I found is 4 and 23 hundredths minus 2 and 51 hundredths leaves me with 1 and 72 hundredths. And what I also notice is 1 and 70, 72 hundredths is close to our estimated answer of 1. Now let's take a look at question number 6. The directions are a little different this time. The directions say to find the difference and then also to check your answer. Now let's talk about how to correctly check our answer. Here it says, since subtraction and addition are inverse operations, you can check subtraction by adding. So when we need to check our answer, we're going to check our subtraction through addition. Now, first of all, our job is to find the difference. So let's go ahead and find the difference of the two numbers that are given. They give us 12 and 56 hundredths, and from that we're going to subtract 5 and 18 hundredths. Now, when I subtract, I need to make sure that my decimal values, my place values, are aligned. And an easy way to do that is to look to make sure that the decimal points are lined up. And in this case, they are. So that means I'm subtracting the correct place values. Now we're going to start in the numbers in the hundredths place. What I know is I can't take eight hundredths away from six hundredths, so I'm going to have to regroup. So I'm going to make this five in the tenths place into a four. And then that six hundredths is now going to become sixteen hundredths. Now when I take eight away from sixteen, that's going to leave me with eight hundredths. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 4 minus 1 is going to leave me with 3. So we have that 3 in the tenths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. What I know is I can't take 5 away from 2, so I'm going to once again have to regroup. So I'm going to regroup that 1, which leaves me with 0 in the tens place. And now that 2 in the ones place becomes 12. Well, I know that 12 minus 5 is going to leave me with 7. Now, my last step is to make sure that I'm placing the decimal point. And I know that my decimal point should fall between the 1's and the 10's place. So I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point in between the 7 and the 3. Once again, it's the 1's and the 10's place. So I know the difference between these two numbers is 7 and 38 hundredths. Now, our last step is to check our answer. And once again, we're going to check our answer using addition. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference that we found. So I'm going to take 7 and 38 hundredths. So I'm going to write 7 and 38 hundredths down. So we have 7 and 38 hundredths. Now, to that, I'm going to add the number that was subtracted. And the number that was subtracted in this problem was 5 and 18 hundredths. So I'm going to now add. 5 and 18 hundredths to my 7 and 38 hundredths. Now, just like with subtraction with decimals, when I'm doing addition with decimals, I need to make sure once again that my place values are aligned. So do a quick check with the decimal points and make sure they're lined up. And now we're going to start by working in the numbers in the hundredths place. I know that 8 plus 8 is going to give me 16, so I'm going to write down my 6 and regroup the 1. 
Now let's focus on the numbers in the tenths place. I know that 3 plus 1 is going to give me 4, plus the regrouped 1 is going to take me to 5. So I now have that 5 in the tenths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 7 plus 5 is going to give me 12. Now my last step is to make sure that I placed my decimal. And once again, I know that my decimal point should fall between the ones and the tenths place. So my sum turns out to be 12 and 56 hundredths. And what should happen is my sum should equal the number that we subtracted from in the original problem. And I know that 12 and 56 hundredths is equal here to my 12 and 56 hundredths, so our answer checks out. Now, let's take a look at question number eight. Our job, once again, is to find the difference and then also to check your answer. Now, for question eight, they give us 34 and 9 tenths, and from that, we're going to subtract 4 and 29 hundredths. What I notice is this. I'm going to need to make an equivalent decimal for 34 and 9 tenths so that I also have a digit in the hundredths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a zero behind my 9. And that's just going to keep my place values aligned and make subtraction easy. Now, once again, I'm going to make sure my decimal points lined up, and they are, so I'm going to go ahead and begin my subtraction. Now, I'm going to look first at the numbers that are in the hundredths place. And what I know is I can't take the 9 away from the 0, so I'm going to have to regroup. So what happens is I'm going to take this 9 in the tenths place, and I'm now going to make that 9 into 8 tenths. Now that 0 in the hundredths place is going to become 10 hundredths. Now, I know that when I take 9 away from 10, it's going to leave me with 1. So I now have that 1 in the hundredths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 8 minus 2 is going to leave me with 6, so I have that 6 in the tenths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that if I have 4 minus 4, that's going to leave me with 0 ones. So I'm going to write down a 0 in the ones place. And then my last step is going to be to bring down that 3 in the tens place. Now, what I need to do next is this. I need to make sure that I place my decimal point correctly. And what I know is, once again, my decimal point should be placed between the ones and the tens place. So I'm going to place my decimal in between the 0 and the 6. So my difference turns out to be 30 and 61 hundredths. Now my next step is to check our answer. And once again, you check subtraction through addition because they're inverse operations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference that we just found, which was 30 and 61 hundredths, and to that I'm going to add the number that was subtracted. And the number that was subtracted in this problem was 4 and 29 hundredths. So I'm going to write down my 4 and 29 hundredths. Now I'm going to do a quick check to make sure that I have aligned the decimal places correctly, and I can do that by checking to make sure that my decimal points are lined up, and they are. So now we're going to focus on the numbers in the hundredths place first. I know that 1 plus 9 is going to give me 10, so I'm going to write the 0 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. Now my next step is to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 6 tenths plus 2 tenths is going to give me 8, plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me 9 tenths. So I'm going to write down my 9 in the tenths place. Next, we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 4 plus 0 is going to give me 4. So I'm going to write down the 4 in the ones place. And then I'm going to bring that 3 down that's in the tenths place. Now my last step, once again, is to place my decimal in between the ones and the tenths. And what I notice is this sum, which is 34 and 9 tenths or 90 hundredths, is equal to the number that was subtracted from. So I know that my check is correct. Now, let's take a look at question number 13. It's one of our real world problem solving questions and number 13 says, the width of a tree was 3 and 15 hundredth inches last year. This year the width is 5 and 38 hundredth inches. How much did the width of the tree increase? Now as I read through that problem what I notice is the width of the tree last year was 3 and 15 hundredth inches. This year the width of the tree is 5 and 38 hundredth inches. 
they want to know how much the width of the tree increased. So what that means is I need to take the width of the tree this year, which was 5 and 38 hundredths, and from that I'm going to subtract the width of the tree from last year, which was 3 and 15 hundredths. Now I'm going to rewrite that problem so that my decimal place values are aligned. So I have my 5 and 38 hundredths, and from that I'm going to subtract my 3 and 15 hundredths. Now, now that my place values are aligned, I'm going to start out by subtracting the numbers in the hundredths place first. I know that 8 hundredths minus that 5 hundredths leaves me with a 3 in the hundredths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 3 tenths minus 1 tenth leaves me with 2 tenths, so I have my 2 in the tenths place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 5 minus 3 is going to leave me with 2. Now our last step is to make sure we're placing the decimal correctly, and I'm going to place my decimal in between the ones and the tenths place. So what I know is the increase in the width of that tree was 2 and 23 hundredths inches, and we now have our answer. Now let's take a look at question number 14. It's another one of our real world problem solving questions, and number 14 says, the temperature decreased from 71 and 5 tenths degrees Fahrenheit to 56 and 8 tenths degrees Fahrenheit overnight. How much did the temperature drop? So what I know is this. The temperature started at 71 and 5 tenths degrees Fahrenheit, and then it decreased to 56 and 8 tenths degrees Fahrenheit. So I know that when I see that word decreased, I know that I'm going to need to subtract or find the difference of those two numbers. So I'm going to create my problem, and it's going to be 71 and 5 tenths, and from that I'm going to subtract the 56 and 8 tenths. Now I'm going to rewrite that problem so that my decimal points are aligned, my place values are aligned. So I have 71 and 5 tenths minus 56 and 8 tenths, and once again, I now have my place values aligned. Now I'm going to start focusing on the numbers in the tenths place. Well, I can't take 8 tenths away from 5 tenths, so I'm going to have to regroup. So I'm going to take that 1 that's in the tenths place, and I'm now going to make that 0 ones, and this 5 in the tenths place is now going to become 15 tenths. Well, I know that 15 minus 8 tenths is going to leave me with 7 tenths. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. Well, I can't take 6 away from 0, so once again I'm going to have to regroup. So I'm going to regroup that 7 in the tens place, and we're now going to make that a 6, and the 0 is going to turn into 10. I know that 10 minus 6 is going to leave me with a 4 in the ones place. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the tens place. And I know that 6 minus 5 is going to leave me with 1. Now my last step once again is to place the decimal, and once again your decimal falls in between the ones and the tenths place. So what I know is the temperature dropped 14 and 7 tenths degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to add that degrees Fahrenheit in, and we now have the answer to our question. Now let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 70. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete number one and number two, as well as numbers 3 through 6 found in your GoMath workbook on page 70. I hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.